to start this video off, look how cool this is. Our neighbor actually carved all that, or routed it, I guess. I'm not sure how he made it exactly, but did all of it by hand. Pretty cool. And, needless to say, this one was, uh, you know, due for replacement. Really cool. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate it. Skinny compared to the rest. But you're gonna go on the other side. It's pretty skinny compared to the rest. And we're just gonna go ahead and deworm it. Everybody else looks perfectly healthy except for him. If you keep dropping this, we won't have any dewormer left. So if you've been around our channel for a long time, you know that we do rotational grazing. However, there are still occasions. So that ram, those two rams, are the first ones that we have uh, dewormed on rotational grazing in two years. And sometimes you just get an animal that's just more susceptible to them. The downside is that those guys bred. So it could make the others worse as far as the offspring it could make it to where they're like him if they are they'll end up leaving this farm too but our rams are temporary because we keep the the ewes to grow our flock so eventually once we get to 350 ewes which are the adult females once we get to 350 then our rams can stay for longer durations so if we have rams that we really like like last year we had some really good ones that we really liked but unfortunately we couldn't keep them because we kept their daughters so it's unfortunate, it's kind of a pain, but it's part of the growing process. Once we get there, it'll be much better. Well, Decided to fix the uh, manure spreader after we picked up some rocks for Mike. Essentially, what you see going on here, we had to pull back with the winch to line this up to the even with the back side of the other side of it. We had to use a jack to lift the drum up. This whole thing was completely loose. There's some real thinking going on right here. Looks good. That's gonna be hard to fill. Upside down. Oh, it's gonna be, yeah. Well, actually there's, oh, it's because it's rolled at the bottom. Yeah. There's a big gap down there though. Down here? Yeah. Right here it should be one. Well, it's, the gap is, I wonder if we could use another clamp and pull it. Squeeze it in that way? Yeah. You get that clamp in there. Well, we'll use a C clamp. Yeah, it's, those other clamps wouldn't be able to put enough pressure on it. We'll have to use a C-clamp for that. But I think we can get that in there. If we get that in there though, I think we'd be in better. If nothing else, we could get in there just to tack it. Oh, you know what? Shield right here. Oh, there's a shield. Go farther down and see, because down there it's actually really close. I think if we do it there, it might be enough. 
said, of course, you can't spin the you can't spin the clamp over because you know it'd be too easy. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, not yeah, like right it'll, it'll stop eventually. Oh yeah, you're against it now, whole way down, and I don't think down there because you can do another one right here if you need to. Well, but we, we can attack this and then move the clamp. Yeah, yeah. we got options. Look at that. We're gonna cut this one still. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut that. One. I think this one's just because it's. This is rolled. You just need to cut no, it. No, well, it's, it's all rolled, but it's this end's shorter. Oh, it's because that one's got the spacers in it. That's right. Yeah. But we could put a spacer in, then we wouldn't have to cut it. Yeah. I've got some. I've got some. Uh, let's see, what we got? It's gonna depend if we can weld to this or not. <clears throat> I mean, it's metal. We'll weld to it. Well, no, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if it's ate away like this stuff right. down here. This I mean, a is, lot of it in there is pretty. Yeah, well, I think the bottom part's better than the top by far. So I think that if we, but what I'm saying is that stock, that piece that I have, let that jack down a little bit. Mike. Perfect. <laughs> a little much, but so, what I'm thinking is, is that we put our spacer in here. I just don't know that we can well do that. Actually. I bet you we could. It's not bad. It's jagged from the rust. So be careful when you run your fingers across it. I mean, nothing else. It's nothing that a tetanus shot can't fix. But. Come to a pile of random junk metal. And look, it's already got a hole for the bolt. <laughs> the heck of a spacer. It is. But it's about the same thickness as what was down there. Newer. Yeah, and thicker. <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's think on this one a second. We're well on our way to fixing it. Mike's doing all the welding. He's, he's just a better welder than I am. You can see how we had to pull everything in different directions. Instead, we had the we had the winch pulling down here. We got a jack lifting up on the drum so that this can be, you know, as straight as possible down the row. And then the other thing is, is that we had to pull with the winch out here because this gear wasn't lined up well with that one. So if this one's sitting back here turned like this, and the other one in front of it's like this, the chain will end up. It'll likely come off or it'll just damage the chain and the gears and then it won't work at all anyhow. And then once Mike gets done, I'm gonna end up cutting this bolt off because that stripped. Can't get it off. Need to get it off because as you can see we need to adjust the tension on that chain <clears throat> so that that, um, that chain will ride on the roller and make it closer. And last but not least, a little bit of uh, Work down here, a couple of angle braces. Or not angle braces. Yeah, angle braces. Sorry. Down here, and we should be good. Ish. It's not winter by any means. I mean, it was September 22nd, I think, is the first day of summer. Or, sorry, last day of summer. And it's the 24th of September, so technically it is fall. Uh, just came in the barn. We gotta get some stuff ready in the barn. So, you've seen the hay feeders we made. You've seen a spread uh, sawdust before. And for the most part, the sawdust is spread. Thanks to that. What are you doing? Wild animal. <laughs> what? What's wrong with you? So some of those things that need to be changed is simply the gate mechanism that we use. These gates are going to be changed. Um, they did very well for last year, but we'd really prefer metal ones because with these, if we're trying to separate animals and we want to slam it shut, we could. 
but it's possible it's going to break it. It's just not really designed for that. So we're going to make some metal ones. We're going to make some metal ones, and we're going to use those um, on the end, right here in the middle, you just saw, and also up here. Our creep feeders are ready. Um, I need to bring them out, and we also need to make the mechanism that goes around that. There's just a lot of things that need to be done for the animals to come back in here. Now, we have time. They don't come back in here until mid-December is what we aim for. It could be sooner than that. It just depends a lot on lambing. If they start lambing earlier, if they start lambing in, say, late November, they will come in sooner. Mostly, it's all relatively simple stuff. Nothing that takes a lot of time or even is it all that difficult. The only thing that is kind of difficult is we put all of this creek gravel down because this is going to be our feedlot. So basically from the edge of the barn over to where you can kind of see where the grass is not present really anymore. This has all been graveled and we're going to put up some panels down this side down there and kind of crawl these guys in. But right here we need to put our food trough or feed trough up. And our feed trough is actually going to be very similar to that except we've already started taking that one down. The difference is going to be that we're still going to drive posts in the ground like we did there, but we're going to use PVC, the six inch PVC pipe. Same stuff that we used in the barn last winter for feed troughs. We're going to use that because that stuff worked very well. Uh, doesn't rust, doesn't rot, so there's a lot of benefits to it. The other thing is that it's the volume that can hold us quite a bit more. I'm going to come back out of the wind. It is incredibly windy today. Um, see the flag moving. It's a it's an eight foot tall, twelve foot long flag, and it's almost straight out. I mean, our winds today are probably twenty five, like twenty five mile an hour sustained and thirty five, forty five mile an hour gust. Pretty breezy. One of the first things that we're going to start with is down here at the end because this is one. This is the most important thing that needs to be done because we do have to put these gates up. The gates in the middle, we actually don't use, except for when we're sorting lambs off or if we're trying to separate somebody, then we we'll, might use them. And then up there, at that end, same thing. We don't have to have those pins up there. We set them up because if an animal needs attention, it's easy for us to separate them from the flock, get them the attention they need, and then put them back in the flock once they are better. The same thing with bottle lambs gives us the ability to separate them out. Um, so. Those things can all come last, but this has to be, this is step one, essentially. We're going to go ahead and frame this up, make it to where we can put a 4x4. Four four. These are actually on here and they're on there good and solid. What'll happen is we'll put the gate hangers, we'll put them in here, and then we'll actually hang our gates on. And I know it's gonna seem silly, but these are actually out like that for two reasons. One of which is when lambs are in there, they can actually get in some smaller spaces. So because of the bolts that we have, the hangers, it would have had a gap about like that, and the smaller lamps could actually get through that. So we have this going out in order to stop them from being able to go through. The other reason is that if we, like I said, with our hanger out there, whenever we swing the gate back that way, it actually this will be a stopper. So it won't be able to go and hit the, the barn wall, essentially. On this side, we want it to be able to go as far as we want because that gate... Oh, let's see. I think I'm gonna explain. These two gates, so there's 40 feet. The barn itself is 40 feet wide. I want to be able to leave that gate shut on the other side, but open this gate all the way, and I can use it to close this off. So, like, once we let them outside to go to the feed trough, I can close this gate or open this gate all the way up, and it closes this door, but yet leave the door open. Mainly because when we're clearing the barn out with manure, all the debris the particles that float around the air, I don't want to ingest that. 
So we try to keep these doors open when we're working with manure. It's, uh, yeah. Let's go to the other side real quick. Those are all hung. Like I said, all we did was basically double up the stud and we'll, uh, we'll put the hanger inside of the actual stud and this is just to brace the outside essentially. Did it up there because there'll be two gates going across. Actually three, but still. Um, and then did it again over there and then the two bottom ones you saw. So the barn ever so slowly chipping away at the few things that we need to get done before winter starts. Um, like I said, it's a lot easier to do it now than have to scramble and hurry because everybody started lambing earlier and we need to hurry up and get them in here. So next, we're going to go and put the lumber that we have left over for other projects. We're going to put that away real quick. video um, I know there wasn't a lot going on but again this is kind of our downtime this one well, about three week period so we're gonna take advantage of it do some stuff as a family I've got to go get the Camaro ready for our road trip tomorrow but other than that um, if you have questions put them down below and of course come back we uh, we still have a lot of stuff to do before winter hits but we're gonna try to take advantage of the nice weather and some time to enjoy with just us as a family so thanks for watching have a blessed week and we'll see you next time The smell of fresh cut hay, pretty enjoyable smell. I'm not gonna lie, this hay still smells great. I just I like the smell of hay, even if it's not fresh. It's kind of fresh, it's this year's. If you know anywhere to get air fresheners or candles that smell like that, you let me know.